What is going on, everybody? I'm Aslan Hajavandi, Director of Digital Media for Warchant.com, your ultimate seminal sports source promo code at the bottom of your screen. Michael Langston joining us because we're going to talk about recruiting. He's a recruiting analyst for Warchant.com. Subscribe also to the YouTube page for the right corner. What else, Michael, can I do to show support? Hit the like button. Hit the like button for us. Uh, keeps us happy. Uh, keeps everything going and uh, keeps us giving you, uh, obviously, some good content as far as breaking things down, team and recruiting. So, uh Keep it coming, guys. Yeah. What a magical weekend. Super wild card weekend. We had an NFL triple header on Saturday and Sunday. In the middle of all this, trying to uh, throw a wrench into my plans to sit around and do nothing but being an American man watching NFL football all weekend long, Michael Lakes. We keep getting all these recruiting developments for Florida State. They got two guys on Saturday. DJ Williams out of Auburn, Kier Thomas from South Carolina. Sunday, they show no signs of slowing down, picking up another portal prospect. And somebody from the high school level, uh, which is always important to keep things going fresh. Let's start off with what they got in the defensive backfield. Another SEC product, uh, Jamie Robinson coming to Florida State. Yeah, that, that's a huge, huge pickup. Uh, I think uh, Woody Womack put it best uh, when I saw it on Twitter. He's one of the best uh, portal players, regardless of position. This guy, he's just everywhere. I mean, he 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 can he can support you in run defense. He's he's also very good in pass defense. Very good safety. Very talented safety. That's versatile. If you if you get caught in cornerback situations where he has to cover people, he's very comfortable with that. He's that he is out of his comfort zone with that. So. Just an all-around great defensive back that that's going to give you a, a major lift as far as that secondary and and that's been a, an area of concern all years uh, you know for FSU that that they had to improve uh, you know what they're doing in the secondary obviously lost to Sante Samuel so you have to there's there's things they had to replace but also the safety position just wasn't good you lose Hampson Nazardean so uh, they needed somebody that's going to come in there and and help you and make an impact and. And certainly, uh, Jamie fits that freshman. I think all SEC freshman and finished freshman year. So, uh, from Lee Leesburg, Georgia, Lee County High School, uh, powerhouse over there in in, in North Georgia. And, um, so, uh, I think he just he's a guy that that really is going to impact, um, have a big impact on on your defense as far as controlling the middle of the field. You throw him in there with a Travis J who's a very promising young guy as far as safety. You got you a nice group in there to go along with the, the McClellan kid. They also picked up from Arkansas at cornerback. So you can tell they're really addressing uh, this secondary and, and their concerns of, of what happened this past year. And, and they understand they need, they need guys and, and they got a dude. I mean, they got a dude in Jamie Robinson. That's, that's going to be a playmaker for him. Uh, the grades that we had on the screen earlier were from the uh, 2020 season, Michael. Uh, his 2019 numbers, I think, look a little bit more uh, fair, but we'll pull up the, the 2020 numbers uh, right now here. Uh, the one thing I did find interesting, I did see the tweet that Woody made about him just being one of the best guys in the portal, period. What I, what I did find a little bit interesting, though, is the fact that if, if you go and scroll in the analytics and you look at the uh, the receiving percentage, so basically these are guys that he's lined up against targeted and the amount of times they've caught the ball against him, he is at a 74.5%, which is not ideal just for perspective's sake. Asante was at 59% right. He's in 56 uh, the year before. So I, I do wonder, he was graded as a cornerback. Do you know, does he project more as a cornerback, you think, when he arrives in Tallahassee, or will he be more maybe of a safety? No, I think he's going to be a safety. I mean, that's where his biggest attributes are. Very good run defender, very good instincts, uh, very – uh, hard to pass as far as passing windows. I think he's going to put your free safety position. I think that's where you're going to play. But like I said, he's comfortable if you put him in that situation. But obviously, you'll have your corners in most cases on on the wide receivers. But what he does well is, is a center fielder. Uh, he, he has great instincts around the football. That's what he does well. His ball skills are very good, very good ball skills, very good athlete. Oh, definitely a willing tackler. Uh, he will get in there and uh, you know be physical, and so that's why he that's where his value comes is from that safety position. Even though they're listing him as as cornerback, it's it's going to be mostly uh, safety from what I hear. Yeah, uh, he graded out uh, in ten games this past season: five at cornerback, five at strong safety. Now you're looking at his stats as a freshman, uh, a little bit more robust, really good tackling numbers. So that kind of maybe portends him perhaps uh, projecting better. Uh, as a safety. So again, another position of need, they need help in the defensive backfield and they get that with some instant help 
Uh, but projecting ahead to the future, Florida State also wasting no time getting their class of 2022 uh, sort of, uh, you know, motivated and up and running. Uh, Quincy McAdoo, what kind of prospect did they get with that kid? Yeah, we 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 kind of, I kind of knew you know I knew about Jamie coming down the pike. We felt pretty good. I think we hit in several recruiting jets, but this is one that we didn't know that he was going to do it today. And and uh, Quincy McAdoo is a guy that they've been on for since I think Norvell got the job. I think Sam Spiegelman's done a lot of articles, including today with the commitment. Uh, you're getting a electric playmaker. 4-4 type of runner uh, speed-wise, 6'3", 180. I know it says 173, but he's probably 6'3", 180 now. Uh, a very explosive athlete uh, overall, can play offense and defense. More so, he will play receiver, but he is just really dynamic when the ball's in his hands. Uh, special teams, I think he had five special teams, uh, either kickoff and punt returns together when you combine them together for touchdowns. Uh, this guy is, is electric. I mean, he just, when the ball's in his hands, he, you hold your breath because he's going to, you know, he's going to make a big play. And uh, to get a guy to go along with a uh, five-star, I think he's a five-star now, Travis Hunter, um, that's a dynamic duo that you, you've you already added coming into the 2022 class. So they're already off to a really good start at the receiver position um, and, and getting McAdoo and uh, Travis Hunter uh, coming into the following year. But, um, both of them are electric playmakers. Both of them uh, can stretch the field. Obviously, with um, McAdoo, he's got he's got more length as far as being six foot three. He's got long arms. He can really go up and get the ball. We haven't seen that yet as far as on these clips, but trust me, guys, he can really go up and get it. He's got a very nice vertical high point in the ball, and um, he can he can really go after he gets it. So. I think it's just. I think it just shows you what the momentum and, and what Norvell's doing, and and now now we're starting to see. Everyone's like, well, where's all the, where's all the four stars and where are all the five stars? Now we're starting to see that impact from uh, you know, which kind of seemed to start with Mackenzie Milton. Once they got Mackenzie Milton in, it seems like everything else has just been a solid uh, recruiting moment up stick, and and now they're hot. They're on fire. I mean, you know, kids want to be there and. Kids are believing what their their vision is, and and you can see the excitement that's uh you know really high about uh, what Norvell's doing. And uh, I think he went out there, you know, first with a transfer portal. He addressed real key positions that they really needed uh, up, upgrades in. Went out there and got productive players that can help them right now. And then and then on the high school you note, know, you get a kid that's a top one hundred player like that. That's going to read you. Um, that's just going to ignite your class and ignites excitement. So it's like other kids are going to be like, Hey, I got to go see that place. That's a place I need to see. So there's a lot of excitement around FSU football now. And, and, and if you go out there and you have a good season where Milton's, you know, healthy and he's looking good and he's sharp and this offense is clicking and these defensive additions, they got changes. You don't have to be perfect, but it changes what your defense is and how they look and, and forcing turnovers. I think uh, I think you got an exciting team that a lot of recruits are going to be a, want to be a part of. It's this is crazy, man. I can't, I can't believe they're getting kids coming off a three and six season when they they looked as bad as they did uh, at certain times. Um, it's it's crazy. I, I I would not have forecasted any of these sort of uh, <laughs> additions. I mean, and again, some of these guys, you know, coming from the portal, they've got their reasons for leaving their their current schools. But again, just to get a guy like Milton, to get Jermaine Johnson. Uh, Andrew Parchment, you know, and then we'll see what Keir Thomas and Jamie Robinson and, and DJ Williams can do. You, you, you figure that, you know, you're going to at least maybe get some sort of close production to what you had maybe with a, a LaDamian Webb out of Williams, but you're probably going to get upgraded play uh, on your interior defensive line with a guy like Keir Thomas. And, um, you know, Jamie Robinson gives you another piece to put in the, in the backfield to, to figure out what you want to do defensively. So Adam Fuller's got some options. And then I guess crazy enough, uh, as we looked ahead, kind of to 2022, they're they're not done again. Now they're they're what we're at 20, God, 23 now. I can't even keep up count with what they're at right now when it comes to transfers with 2021. But Tywan Malone, as we record this, uh, was been in Tallahassee this weekend. What's going on with that big fella from New Jersey, Mark? Yeah, he stayed uh, three days. Um, I think his he departed his visit uh, around 11 a.m. on on Sunday. So each day he got to see a different part of FSU. Talked to several people that that are very familiar with the visit, and you know they told me that um, you know the, the, the impression I got was it was heavily focused on baseball because he's a big baseball prospect, and and FSU did a really good job from what I've told uh, selling that pitch, and then and then also um, 
you know, Odell Higgins has been on him the longest. I mean, one of the longest uh, you know, standing relationships he has with different schools and, and he's really built a good relationship with, with, with Odell as far as uh, he like. Uh, if anybody's been around Odell, he's very genuine, straightforward. He's, there's, there's not a lot of ploy or sales pitch. It's just basically, this is how I do things. And, and I think um, personality wise, he really connects with Odell. So just being on campus and seeing the campus for himself, you know, he saw all the facilities, saw the, the IPF uh, from what I was told, he saw, you know, different things with the baseball facilities and, and stuff like that. They were even practicing. So I think he saw practice. I'll know more when I talk to Taiwan Malone, which we we're taping this today, but I, I expect to talk with Taiwan Malone on, on uh, Sunday night. So I think he saw a little bit of different, all kinds of different aspects and he really got a feel of, 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 of home when he was at FSU. That's the, the wording I was told that he really felt he seemed comfortable. His family was there. There seems to be a high level of comfort that he was there in uh, Tallahassee as far as based on the the people, the, the multiple people I talked to, you know, surrounding this visit that um, they hit everything that they wanted to hit on the visit. Obviously, everyone would want a commitment from a Rivals 100 defensive tackle that would be massive for FSU. But I think uh, I think they very much hit on the things that they wanted to. I'm going to talk more with, with contacts and get more info to kind of see where they – the pecking order where they stand now after this visit. But I do think they, they hit on the things they needed to, uh, the comfort level was there. And that's kind of the thing you were looking for when, when you take a visit on your own, we're in a COVID season, you know, the coaches, you know, can't have interaction uh, obviously because it's a dead period, but you can, the kid, you, you, you always see what the feel of the kids have you know, as far as when they're on campus and, you know, a small, you know, college town type of place like FSU and, and even Tallahassee, you know, a, a medium sized city that, you know, sometimes that connects with with recruits. Other times they like bigger cities. And I think with Taiwan, he really likes, you know, the um, the medium sized town, you know, with Tallahassee. And I think they spent a lot of time, you know, being around the city of Tallahassee and seeing what it's like. It's not always this cold in Tallahassee, Taiwan. <laughs> no. no. Man. So if you want to escape the cold weather in the northeast, man, you will. It's just it's kind of weird right now. So, so uh, fear not with all that. All right, Michael, that said, you're going to keep an eye on that. Everything's over on the premium recruiting board. The promo code to get a subscription is scrolling at the bottom of your screen. And for the latest and the greatest, go to the PRB. Michael Lanks will have you covered. Thanks for the time and the knowledge as always, Michael. You got it.